Hi, Zeta. Hi. Where were we yesterday? At school. And what did we do there? Get out the trays of the Pythagoras. Pythagoras. And you know what? I have this book. Can you read what the title of that book is? What's your angle? Yep, angle. Hi. Pythagoras. That's right. This book is called What's Your Angle Pythagoras? And I thought that we could read it today so that you knew a little bit more about Pythagoras. Long ago in ancient Greece, there lived a curious boy named Pythagoras. Pythagoras just couldn't help poking his nose into places. Sometimes his curiosity got him in trouble, but sometimes it paid off. What's Pythagoras doing? Poking his nose in a nest. In a nest, because he's climbed up a very big tree, hasn't he? Yeah. All right, let's see. Do you know where Greece is? What continent is it in? I don't know. It's in Europe. One day, Pythagoras sat in the shade of an old olive tree. He could see the harbor and the sparkling blue sea around the island where he lived. Nearby, two workmen were building a temple. They began to argue. This ladder is too short to reach the roof, Pepro grumbled. That's not possible, said Saltos. The wall is 12 feet tall, so I made the ladder 12 feet long. Pepros roared, the ladder only reaches the roof when it is flat against the wall, and then no one can climb it. This is as bad as the columns on the porch. Pythagoras poked his head out from behind the tree. What's wrong with the columns, he asked. Pepros frowns. It's that pesky Pythagoras again. Stop bothering us. At this rate, we'll never finish the temple. Do you notice anything about this picture? Right there in the background, there's lots of ships that are sailing around, aren't there? And who's this? A cat? There's a cat, too. Hmm, that's neat. As the workmen argued, Pythagoras crept around to the other side of the building. Four columns stood on crooked bases. Some colon columns leaned to the left, others tilted to the right. These columns will never hold up a roof, Pythagoras said to himself. I wish there was something I could do to help. Still thinking about the problem, he ran home for dinner. Do the columns look crooked to you? Uh -huh. When he got home, his father was talking about his ship. I sailed to Crete with a shipload of tiles. But Lepus and Boundus got there before me. With their fast new ship, they will take away all of my customers. Through a mouthful of bread and olives, Pythagoras asked, Father, you will always sail to Rhodes first and then to Crete. Why don't you just sail straight from here to Crete? It would be a lot faster. It's too dangerous, his father replied. It would not be safe to sail straight from here to Crete unless I knew the exact distance out at sea. I could miss Crete and end up anywhere. I'm leaving for Egypt tomorrow. I want you to come with me, son. One day you will command my merchant ships, and you have much to learn. At dawn the next morning, Pythagoras and his father set sail. They sailed along the coast. Pythagoras said, I can't wait to see Alexandria. I hear they have great buildings there. I might want to be a builder someday. But son, you are going to be a merchant, his father said. The life of a merchant is exciting. You get to sail to faraway places. He put an arm around Pythagoras' shoulders. You just have to look at it from the right angle. Soon, they were sailing into the port of Alexandria, the capital city of Egypt. Pythagoras marveled at the great lighthouse that stood proudly against the sky. Seltos and Pepris should see this, he exclaimed. At the dock, a man greeted them. I am the builder, Nefer Hepper Hercus Keeper, but people just call me Nef. I'm here for the tiles. Pythagoras was excited to meet a real builder. Have you built anything around here, he asked. Neff nodded. As a matter of fact, I helped to build the lighthouse. How do you get the base so straight, Pythagoras asked, thinking of the crooked columns back at home. You must be a master builder. Neff smiled and stuck out his chest. The secret is the special rope that's been used by my family for ages. 
You use a knotted rope to cut stone, Pythagoras asked. Neff laughed. Oh, dear boy, this, this rope does not cut the stone. I use this rope to make a special angle. I call it the right angle because it helps me make a nice square corner that's exactly the right angle for cutting stone. Neff let Pythagoras hold the rope. Pythagoras made some triangles, but none had the right angle. How long do you make each side, he asked. Oh, I've shown you too much already, chuckled Neff, and he took back his rope. Why don't you run along now? As his father and Neff talked, Pythagoras found an old piece of rope and tied knots in it. He pulled the rope into different triangles. Finally, he made a triangle that seemed right. It had three lengths on one side, four lengths on another side, and five lengths on the longest side. I've got it, he said to himself. Just then, Pythagoras' father called him. Carry this crate of tiles, son. Neff and I will carry the rest. I would carry them, Neff sighed, but I've hurt my thumb, so I can't. You'll have to take two trips. When they got to the house Neff was building, he said, While you get the rest of the tiles, I'll get the money I owe you. Grumbling, Pythagoras' father headed back to the ship. Neff patted Pythagoras on the head. Be a good boy and watch these tiles for me he said as he disappeared into the house. And don't touch anything. Pythagoras looked around the sunny courtyard. In the middle stood a statue base that was made of stone. He took some tiles out of the base, out of the crate, just to see how they would look around the base. I can put them back quickly enough, he thought. He made a row of three red tiles along one side of the statue base. He added two more rows of red tiles, making a square. Some of these crates have blue tiles, Pythagoras said. Soon, red and blue tiles were scattered everywhere. Pythagoras made a square of blue tiles and a big square of red tiles and blue tiles, and he was admiring his work when he noticed the statue base is a right triangle. Its sides are three, four, and five tiles long. He counted the tiles. Strange, he thought. The nine tiles in the red square plus the 16 tiles in the blue square equal... How the, many? The, the t 25. 25 tiles of the big square, right? The same as we looked at yesterday. There are exactly 25 tiles in the big re red and blue square. Suddenly a voice demanded, What do you think you are doing? Neff rushed into the courtyard. Pythagoras' father was right behind him. What's all this, Neff snapped. I'm sorry, Pythagoras said. I was going to put the tiles back, but I found out something interesting. I don't care what you found, interrupted Neff. Look at this mess. Pythagoras, pick up the tiles, his father said sternly. And hurry, we have many more stops to make today. Well, the next day, Pythagoras and his father set sail for home. To pass the time, Pythagoras drew a picture of the tile squares he had made. The square with three tiles on each side had nine tiles in it. The one with four on each side had 16 tiles, and the one with five on the side had 25 tiles. So in a square, the length of a side times itself is the number of tiles in the whole square. He called it squaring. When I multiply a number by itself, 3 times 3 is 3 squared. I'll write it 3 with a little 2 up above. So that's 3 squared. 3 squared equals 9. 4 squared equals 16. What's that one? 5 squared equals 25. That's right. Pythagoras drew a new picture. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. He said to himself, I wonder if the squares on the sides of other right triangles will add up the same way, he thought. Pythagoras practically flew off the ship when he got home. He couldn't wait to tell Saltos and Pepros all about the special knotted rope and the secret of the right triangle. When he got to the unfinished temple, Saltos and Pepros were not there. The ladder on the ground where Pepros had thrown it was still there. The ladder would be easy to climb if the bottom were about five feet from the wall, Pythagoras thought. Pepros said that the wall is 12 feet high. 
So 5 squared plus 12 squared equals mm, 169. 25 plus 144 is 169, so we need 13 squared. That's it. The ladder needs to be 13 feet long. He fixed the ladder and headed home. At home, Pythagoras got out a map. He looked at it closely. I wonder, he said to himself. That night, Pythagoras announced, I found out the distance from here to Crete. His father nearly choked on a fig. His mother asked, How can that be, son? Pythagoras answered, I discovered a pattern that works for any right angle. I used it to figure out the distance. Now, father can sail, sail straight from here to Crete. His father stood up. Son, I cannot risk my ship because of some triangle. Father, Pythagoras started to explain. At that moment, Saltos and Pepros came rushing in, puffing hard as if they had raced up the hill. Pepros turned to Pythagoras. You did something to our ladder. Has Pythagoras been bothering you again? His father asked, frowning. Saltos shook his head. Oh, no. He made our ladder the perfect length. We will be able to finish the roof now. Pepros added, then all we have to do is fix the crooked base of the columns. Maybe I can help, Pythagoras offered. Use my rope to make right, tri right angles. If you use a right angle to make the bases straight, the columns will stand straight. Saltos laughed. Great, now we can finish the temple on time. You're welcome to stop by and to help us anytime you like. Pythagoras's father said, Son, on second thought, maybe you should tell me about the distance to Crete. Pythagoras explained, Our island, Samos, forms a right triangle with Rhodes and Crete. If I call the sides of the triangle A, B, and C, I can use my right triangle pattern, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, to figure out the distance from here to Crete. You see how A squared plus B squared equals 34,225. To find C, the distance between here and Crete, I had to find what number multiplied by itself equals 34,225. I already knew that 148 squared equals 21,904. That's too small. I tried 200, but 200 squared equals 40,000. That's too big. I tried 180, and 180 squared equals 32,400. That's close. So I tried 185 times, 185, and that was exactly 34,225. So the distance from our island to Crete is 185 miles. Everyone was amazed. Pythagoras's father clapped him on the back. Good thinking, son. You'll make a fine merchant someday. Pythagoras's mother said gently, perhaps he can use his quick mind for other things. His father nodded. Son, with your clear thinking, you could be a general, a senator, a teacher, or anything you want. It's your choice. Pythagoras smiled. He hoped to do great things in the future. And a few days later, Pythagoras saw his father's boat sailing into the harbor. His father ran to greet him. Pythagoras, you were right. I made it to Crete in record time, his father said, hugging him. Pythagoras looked up at his father and said, You were right too. I just had to learn how to look at it from the right angle. And that's our book. What's your angle? Pythagoras. What did you think? You liked it?